Our second session today is uh, an introduction to using Jupyter Notebooks inside of the Terra platform. Uh, first of all, let me ask how many people here are uh, familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, at least in concept? Uh, okay, now how many people are like comfortable using them and use them regularly? So, okay, so about half as many. Um, so uh, this session is going to act for a lot of people as a little bit of a primer about using Jupyter Notebooks. Um, in the first half, I'm just going to give you a tour around uh, the uh, interface with screenshots and the slides. And then uh, just before we take our 10 minute break, we'll actually clone a workspace and launch a notebook so that the cluster has time to start up. Uh, while we have our 10 minute break, we can uh, have some questions, have some coffee, and then we'll actually go into the notebook and effectively do all the things that I'm showing you here, but we'll actually click on them ourselves. Um, so as uh, you guys just heard, um, one of the things that uh, we've included in Terra is the ability to use uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, inside of the uh, virtual machine that you've uh, created whenever you uh, spin up your own cluster. Um, and so right now we're going to take a look at how you actually do that inside of Terra. And so the uh, objectives for uh, these two halves of the, of the session uh, are, first of all, to understand how exactly the notebook interacts with the concept of the workspace in Terra. Um, and if you uh, haven't gotten this yet, the workspace is kind of the basic building block of the Terra platform. So it's something kind of new that we created. And the idea of the workspace is that it's a reproducible digital laboratory that you can just copy ad nauseum um, as much as you want. And one of the things that you can copy inside of it uh, is uh, a Jupyter notebook, uh, along with all of the data that you would want that Jupyter notebook to be pointing at or accessing. Um, and then we'll also take a look at how to actually use notebooks in general but also in Terra, because we'll be looking in Terra. Um, so by the end of this particular session, the first half of it, uh, you should be able to answer these questions. So you'll know uh, what the different options are for opening the notebook. Uh, you'll see what the different cell types that are supported in our notebooks and what the different uh, kernel types that are supported in our notebooks. You'll see how you can uh, control the runtime environment uh, of your cluster. Uh, by um, including preloaded uh, packages uh, or just choosing whatever customized options uh, you want. Uh, you'll see how you can uh, work in a terminal that communicates directly with um, your virtual machine. Um, and also we'll talk a little bit about how to share uh, the, um, the notebooks, the workspaces in general, but also how to share the notebooks between workspaces. So you'll see how very kind of easy it is to do. Um, so before we start looking at the uh, actual screenshots, um, very quickly uh, we'll talk about where Jupyter fits into this whole uh, cloud computing paradigm that we're doing here. Uh, so um, as we've described, the idea behind Terra is that you can do every part of the process all inside of the Terra platform. So you have a way to uh, uh, upload all of the data and resources that you need. You have a way to uh, process uh, the uh, uh, unmapped uh, files into uh, aligned files and go all the way uh, through the downstream clustering analysis, which you can then interactively do also inside of Terra by opening a Jupyter notebook and then checking how your um, uh, processing is gone. And also, there's lots of fancy sharing capabilities. Um, so. Here's a, 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 a kind of a high-level picture explaining where Terra lives within the cloud and with respect to you as the user. So we as researchers get to use the cloud, but specifically through the portal. So the cloud is everything that's inside of the blue line, and the Terra portal itself is the green box. So we access the green box, and that means two things. Um, one is that we can uh, create a data model um, and then apply various types of uh, 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 workflows to that data model. And the other is that we can create this notebook runtime environment. 
Um, and so the uh, uh, workspace uh, uh, storage is actually a uh, bucket that is um, uh, 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 unique to that particular workspace. And so you can put data into your workspace bucket and then uh, use the Jupyter Notebook to actually interact with it. Um, so a notebook is a specific type of virtual machine uh, designed uh, to allow uh, the uh, editing and running of the code on a remote server. Um, the, and the great thing is, um, we talked about in the previous uh, uh, session, is that everything here is elastic. The size of the machine and the programming language can be adjusted um, actually on the fly. Uh, uh, we'll talk more about the data model. The data model is a, a, a very specific uh, way that the workspace interprets different types of uh, data. So some people need to uh, work on uh, cohorts of individual participants, whereas some people want to work on cancer research, so they need to compare um, uh, samples of both uh, normal tissue and cancerous tissue from the same individual. So the data model is just a way that um, Terra formats these different types of research. Um, and we'll show you how to, use, how to use different types of data models. It's, it's pretty uh, simple. <clears throat> so um, that brings us to Jupyter Notebooks. If you're not familiar with what they are, Jupyter Notebooks are an open source web application. It's very popular nowadays. Uh, you can use it to uh, run live code and equations. Um, it also has a lot of uh, great visualization capabilities. And um, one of the very nice things about it is that it has uh, markdown as a, a native uh, narrative text uh, option. So if anybody here has ever used uh, markdown, uh, it's a very convenient, lightweight uh, formatting uh, language that basically allows you to create commenting to your code that looks like this rather than what you might be used to if you are old school with your coding. You know that usually commentary in code is uh, here's, a, here's a phrase next to the line of code that is separated away by like a hashtag or something. And it's not always the most helpful. You have to have it. But then it sometimes gets very confusing because it's not well laid out. And so the fact that um, the Jupyter Notebooks have this markdown capability is one of the most attractive things uh, about them. It's what makes it such a shareable uh, uh, scientific tool. Um, and so from here on in, I'm just going to go kind of quickly because this is all stuff that we're actually going to play around uh, ourselves in the, after our 10 minute break. So uh, in the notebook, first and foremost, you can actually configure the um, uh, virtual machine yourself. You can choose uh, disk space, number of CPUs, amount of memory. Um, you can uh, get a real-time cost estimate at basically any point while you're inside of um, the, uh, the view that has this button. And you'll notice this button is pretty much always at the top right of the screen. Um, you can always tell what your um, real-time cost estimate is. Um, and so this will, yeah, this will update to you know, something much higher if we were to increase the uh, parameters that we wanted. Um, you can open notebooks in several different ways. Uh, one of the important things is that there are read-only versions. And in fact, you get to open a read-only preview every time you try to open a notebook. And um, you'll see why this is convenient. But long story short, it's because you don't have to wait 15 minutes to realize whether or not you clicked on the right notebook. Um, uh, so inside of uh, the notebooks, uh, you can uh, uh, change the uh, type of cell that you're working with. So there are uh, code cells, and the code cells can switch between either uh, Python or R. And then there are markdown cells, which you can use for making commentary in between your code cells. Um, and, uh, and yeah, there's a bunch of useful uh, tabs, including, uh, you know, we've included uh, a lot of uh, resources and uh, references within the, um, within the interface itself. So it's very easy to find useful help pages 
Uh, so for example, you can go right to the markdown cheat sheet from the help menu, and it'll tell you all the different um, markdown syntaxes. Um, and then finally, uh, there are these various useful tips and uh, tricks for using the notebooks uh, efficiently. So these are just hotkeys. The most popular hotkey that I encourage everyone to use is the shift enter or control enter to evaluate a cell. So a lot of times it'll just be much faster to go through the cell with your finger on the enter button and you just go through uh, uh, as quickly as you want and um, implement all the code all, in, all at once. Um, but yeah, if uh, you guys want to grab these slides and have this cheat sheet um, on hand, feel free, very useful. Um, and then there are, um, as you also already saw, there's a, a whole section for showcase and tutorials. And in the showcase and tutorials section, which is where I'm going to direct everyone to go uh, right now, uh, you will find lots and lots of useful workspaces, uh, including two workspaces that deal in particular with notebooks. Uh, one is called the Jupyter, uh, I'm sorry, the Terra Notebooks Playground. Uh, so hopefully everybody is uh, on this page. Uh, hopefully everybody at this point is uh, registered and ready to go. So if you are, go ahead and go to the showcase section of the Terra library. Wait for it to load. And so uh, just very quickly, uh, these are the two sort of sections of, of showcase materials that we have. Uh, on, the, on the left we have... Yes? Could you, my screen didn't look like your screen. Sure. At, what about here? Did you get here? Uh, I don't know how to get uh, Anytime you're in the anywhere, if you just click on the Terra logo over and over, eventually you'll get back to the landing page. Yeah? Uh, so then go to the menu, go to the Terra library, and go to the showcase section. So on the left are uh, some featured workspaces uh, that are specifically about uh, GATK uh, tools. And on the right are featured workspaces that are more general. They have uh, various case studies and um, uh, repositories for lots and lots of notebooks. So for example, uh, there is the Jupyter Notebooks Playground here somewhere. There, Terra Notebooks Playground is a very useful uh, workspace. For our purposes, we're going to go to the Jupyter Notebooks 101 featured workspace, which is at the bottom. So here we are in our very first workspace. We are still currently in the public version. It's taking a little bit of time to load up, but that's OK. There we go. Uh, so, very quickly, these are the five sections uh, of the workspace. We'll get to see a lot more in a lot more detail what the five sections actually do. Um, up here in the top right, in this three dot button, is where you can actually clone and share workspaces. So this is a workspace that we have to clone because right now you're just looking at the public featured version. So obviously you're not going to be able to do anything um, inside of it. So what you should do is click clone. Name your copy however you want. There's my initials, for example. Pick the appropriate billing project. Um, so the billing project, if you're on free credits, will start with FCC dash, and then it has some random stuff in there. Uh, if you aren't on that billing project, you should have been added to workshop dash temp. You can put it under that. If you see neither, please let me know. You won't be able to clone. Do we have to select a group under authorization? No, no you don't. The authorization domain is uh, an extra security feature. So if you're trying to organize different parts of your lab, now you can have different projects on different authorization domains. So that's more of a collaborative security feature. So here we are now in our own copy. You'll notice I am now, my access level is now project owner. So I can now do stuff in here. I can launch notebooks and launch workflows. So we're going to go ahead and go to the notebooks uh, section. Yes, some people might uh, get a banner saying that 
the workspace that they just generated is still read only, that's very temporary. Just wait like a couple seconds, hit refresh, and then the read only goes away and it's your workspace that you're working. So we're just gonna go ahead and launch this uh, notebook and then we can take uh, our break. I'll just quickly say that uh, it says it'll only take up to two minutes, but a lot of times it can take up to 15 minutes, so it looks like we didn't even need it this time. But um, just so you know, while, you're, while it's waiting for uh, uh, the notebook to load up uh, with an actual interactive version, it gives you this, it gives you this read-only preview, so you can kind of scroll through and be like, oh, is this the one that I, that I actually meant to click on? Or, or not, and then you can stop, and go look for the one that you wanted. Question? Yes. Uh, it says we need to create a double participant. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if it asks you, you need to. Yeah, I. Yes, mine. Mine did that automatically. Yes, if it asks you to create the runtime environment, click to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone, everyone should go ahead and click to start up their clusters. All right, so one thing you didn't see on his screen, uh, because he already had a cluster created, um, it should pop up with a little line that says, uh, click here to create cluster. You're gonna click there, leave the defaults as they are, and then hit okay and it'll start creating your cluster.